Hi guys, I'm Dr. James Cobb from Total Balance Chiropractic in Newcastle. Uh, I've been asked by the wonderful folks at The Grader to spend a few minutes today speaking to you about how to maintain better upright posture in an office-based environment. You might have noticed this yourself, that it's, it's a lot more difficult to keep your body upright without effort when you're sitting compared to when you're standing. So first we're just gonna go through some of the basic anatomy around the spine and pelvis to see why that is the case. Now, here's my little mate, the spinal model. So we've got the front of the spine here, we've got the back of the spine here. If we go down to the bottom section, here we've got the pelvis, and we can see here the sockets where the hip joints join in, okay? Now, when we're standing upright, obviously we have our legs underneath us, and we have all of the muscles of the pelvis that then attach into the legs, and they work together to keep our pelvis in the correct position to keep our posture nice and upright. Now, the problem is, when we sit down, our legs fold out from underneath us, and we're left resting on these bony bits at the bottom here of the pelvis, called the ischial tuberosity. Now, if you look at the shape of the ischial tuberosity, you notice they've got this sort of rounded appearance. So if we sit on the wrong angle surface, what that will tend to do is roll the, pel the pelvis one way or the other. So, for example, if we sit on a surface that is flat, or that is tilted lower at the back. So for example, if you think of a car seat, or a lot of office chairs even are like this, if the back is lower than the front, then the pelvis is gonna have a tendency to roll downhill. And as it rolls backwards, you can see in order for your body to stay upright, that curve in the lower part of the spine has to flatten. And when that happens, the body falls forward into a slump. Now the biggest problem with that is we're in that slumped position all day every day. We have to use a lot of effort to hold our body up, which is really unsustainable for most people. And then even when we get up to move around and we start to get back up into that, that upright posture when we're standing, it's very difficult for our body to pull, us, pull itself all the way back because we don't have a lot of muscles back here that can pull us back into alignment. So if we're stuck in this habitual position for you know, hours every day, then over time, it's gonna create that forward posture, which you know, can create other problems like aches and pains and stiff necks and sore backs and the like. Okay, now if on the other hand, we have a, a seat surface that is tilted slightly forward at the back, it's gonna to tend to create that forward tilt in the pelvis that we have when we're standing. And that slight forward shift is enough to recreate that, that lower curve. And that then helps to support the chest and rib cage and middle back. And it also helps to keep your head up nice and high. Now, the other thing to consider is that every one of us is a different shape and size. Some of us are tall, some of us are short. We have different body dimensions. So the angle is important, but the other thing that is important is the height of the seat. If our seat is too low, even with the right angle, we're gonna to tend to fall forward. If the seat is too high, it's gonna to tend to push us backwards the other way and create cat changes in the curve. So that's the theory anyway. So let's have a look at a real life example and see how that plays out in reality. Okay, so we've got a real live body here to demonstrate with. So this is Dr. Tom, um, and uh, he's going to uh, volunteer his body to show us some of that theory that I was talking about earlier. So what we're going to do is just get Dr. Tom to sit down on just a simple flat stool, and we're going to see what happens to the shape of his body when he lets that relax. So um, Tom, if you turn and face it that way for me. And what I'll get Dr. Tom to do is just sit up nice and straight and tall, and now I want you to just breathe in, breathe out, relax, and let your body slump. So you can see what happened, is happening here with the shape of his spine and also with the position of his pelvis. Just sit up straight again for us there, Tom. So you can see with effort, he can tuck his pelvis under, but as soon as he lets it go, let go here, it rolls in underneath and all of a sudden we lose that wonderful curve. Okay, so what we're gonna do first of all is we're just gonna change that angle so the pelvis doesn't roll downhill. We're gonna have it sitting on a surface that's tilted slightly forward so we can see if we can change that angle. So sit up straight, and then big breath in, breathe out, relax. Still not great, but certainly better than it was before. You know, there's less of a rounded angle through here, shoulders rolling forward. How's that feel there, Tom? More comfortable. Excellent. Correct answer. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of height underneath, okay? So we can get it to the right balance point for the dimensions of Tom's body. So sit up straight again, and let it go. A bit better again. Add a little more height. 
straight. Bit better again. You can almost see a curve starting to form in his lower back here. Now, Tom and I have tested this out before, and we found that the ideal height for him on this stool is a couple of these blocks and then a few layers of towel. So I've got a towel folded here in half and half again. So we've got four layers of towel. Have him sit on that. Breathe in, breathe out. Oops, breathe in, breathe out. Let it go. Really see that curve starting to form here. Now, let's see what happens if we go just that little bit to a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're losing that curve. It's reversing a little bit higher up. Tom will tell you he feels a little bit more wobbly on his stool. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, that's the correct answer. Jump up for me. So let's go back to that original height again. And there we go, there's our balance point. So it really is as simple as that. Okay, so there you go. So the two key things to remember are angle and then height. So to create that angle, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could use one of our foam wedges, which we sell at our office, which help to keep the, uh, the back of the pelvis higher than the front. You could do it using a strategically placed folded or rolled towel, again, to make that seat higher at the back of the front. If you have an office chair that has a tilt function on the seat, you can ma manipulate the dials and, and get that seat tilting forward to create that slight downward angle. And then the height. So again, on an office chair, simply just using the gas, gas lift. So you drop the gas lift right the way down to the bottom, let your body relax, have a feel what your slump looks, feels, looks and feels like, pump it up a little bit, have another relax. If your body's more upright, you're at a better height. Keep going and going and going until you get to a point where once you've gone too high, you'll feel that little bit of a sway backwards and then you just drop it down a fraction and you'll be at the right height and angle for you. So there you go. So hopefully those tips have come in helpful. Get the angle right, get the height right, and you'll certainly have a much better chance of staying fit while you sit. We'll see you again soon.